Okay, this is 10.3, the diffraction grading. Now, this, is going to, this lesson is going to end up looking a lot like our young double slit experiment, and um, it's kind of cool how similar the results are. A diffraction grating is a surface with very many small small equally spaced parallel slits equally spaced parallel slits to produce interference. So often we'll have hundreds or thousands of slits packed into a very, very small um, little grating. And this is similar to our two-slit experiment. So I'll say here two-slit, remember, remember Young's double-slit experiment. What we ended up getting was interference patterns um, with light bands and dark bands. And what happens is as we add more slits, instead of just two, instead of ha having two, we can pack in lots and lots of slits very close to each other. The difference is that using more slits, using more slits gives the exact same result. the exact same result except the light bands now the light bands become much more narrow with more dark space in between. So it's the same result as our dual slit experiment where we get the light bands and dark bands. Uh, this It's going to be the same equation as well, which we'll look at in a second. But we get much clearer separation of our um, of our bands where we have very sharp light bands and then very dark spaces in between them. So before we look at the equation, I just want to take a look at the few pictures that we have below. The first one is an example of white light going through a diffraction grating and you can see that it gets split apart into all of its different um, rainbow components. And notice you still have this main center white band, so we've got the, the, the white light coming in and we still have a center band that is just white light. That is, again, that is our central maximum. That is that zero order maximum that happens at zero degrees. And that happens for all the wavelengths in the light. They all go straight through, and that's great. But then they also get diffracted, and the different wavelengths get diffracted at different angles. And so you can see that on the first order maximum, going up this way, we have the blue on the bottom, and we have the red on the top, and they're diffracted differently. So again, these are very useful for measuring the wavelength of different bits of light and diffracting them differently. Okay, so that's a picture of that sort of diffraction. The next picture here is showing a bit more what's happening here. So you can see that we have all of our light coming through, all of our light is coming through, and we have all these tiny little slits, and we're saying that these slits are separated by a distance of W. This is our slit spacing, W. And you can see that then it goes through the diffraction, it gets deflected by some angle, and, um, and we can find the extra distant, the extra path length is this delta L W sine theta N. It's similar to, again, our young double slit experiment. We don't need to worry too much about those details, but it shows you a bit of what's going on where we have all these different slits very close together, packed together. The last picture here shows you 
the difference as we increase the number of slits on our grating. So here is the familiar result for the two slits, that's the young double slit experiment. With three slits near each other, well you see we still have our, our positive peaks, but you can see that in between we have a lot more dark space. And ten slits you can see it becomes very much more pronounced. Still the peaks are at the same points, but everywhere in between is very dark. A hundred slits, you can see that there's almost nothing in between them. There's just these little peaks. So as we increase the number of slits, we get very much more clearly defined lines, bands. Okay, so that brings us back to our equation, which is W sine theta is equal to M lambda. That looks exactly the same as the double slit, except we said D sine theta instead of W sine theta before. And again, this is for our light bands. And M is equal to 0, 1, 2, like this. Again, we have a zero order maximum at the center, so we can, we can do as an M value of 0. Okay, that's the whole idea. It ends up looking a lot like our double slit experiment, so let's do some problems. This one says light with a wavelength of 540 nanometers is incident on a diffraction grating that has 8,500 lines per centimeter. Calculate the angles of the maxima. So let's write down our information first. Lambda is 540 nanometers. And 8,500 lines per centimeter. I'm going to call that big N. N is 8,500. Um, so 8,500 lines per centimeter. Well, to do these equations, I need to work with W, my slit spacing. So if I'm told I have 8,500 lines per centimeter, well, W is going to equal 1 over that amount. 1 over 8,500 lines per centimeter. And I actually have to convert that as well into meters before I can really go much further. So I'm going to multiply that by 1 meter 100 centimeters. So if we have 8,500 lines per centimeter, we're going to have 8,500 times another 100 lines per meter. Okay. Um, so if that's not clear, I can just do that here. This is 8,5,0,0,0,0 zero, 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 zero lines per meter. Okay, good. So our slit spacing here is going to be 1 over 850,000, so this gives us 1.176 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. That's our slit spacing. And now we can use our equation, which is, well, we want to look at our, our different, it says the angles of the maxima. So we want to find the different maxima. Obviously we will have a zero order maxima. That's where m equals zero. And we don't really need to do any math for that. Theta is zero degrees for that zero order maxima. For our first order maxima, so m equals one, and we have our equation here, w sine, oops, w sine theta is equal to m lambda. So if I want to find theta, I can say that theta is equal to the sine inverse of m lambda over w, which is the sine inverse of, we have m was 1, lambda is 540 nanometers, divide that by w, which was 1.176 times 10 to the minus 6, and we'll see what we get here. So theta is equal to 27 degrees. So that's for our first order. I'll do our second order beside over here. Second order. So m is equal to 2. And we have the same equation. w sine theta equals m lambda. And we can find theta. So it's the sine inverse of, in this case, 2 times the same lambda. 
over the same slit spacing. And this gives us an angle of 67 degrees. So there's our second order maximum. And we could try to do this for number three as well. And of course, if I rearrange this, I get theta is equal to the sine inverse of 3 times 540 times 10 to the negative 9 over 1.176 times 10 to the negative 6. Okay, and what happens here is we get the sine inverse of 1.3776. Now, that's not possible because we can't take the sine inverse of a value that's over 1. 1 is the maximum value that a, a sine of some angle could have. So, we have here, therefore, no solution. And what that means is, what that means is there is no third order maximum, because the angle would have to be larger than uh, 90 degrees there. So 27 degrees, 67 degrees, and 0 degrees, those are all of our maxima, so we have solved the problem there. Those are the angles of the maxima. So we can say, therefore, there are maxima. at 27 degrees, well, I should, uh, I should mention the 0 degrees here, 27 degrees, and 67 degrees. Okay, let's pop on to the next page here. Light emitted by a particular source is incident on a diffraction grating with 9,000 lines per centimeter and produces a first order maximum at 32 degrees. We want to find the wavelength of this light. Okay. Perfect. So again, we have n equals 9,000 lines per centimeter, which is equal to 900,000 lines per meter. Good. And we have our first order maximum, theta 1, is equal to 32 point oh degrees. There's our information. Now we just need to go ahead and solve this. Well, we know that um, W is going to be 1 over N. So 1 over 900,000. We need to get our slit width here. And this is going to be equal to 1.111 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. There's our slit width. And now we can use our equation, which is W sine theta is equal to M lambda. And M is equal to 1 here. So we have, if I want to find lambda, lambda is equal to W sine theta over M. And I can fill in our values here. So W was 1.111 times 10 to the negative 6. That's our slit width. Sine, and our angle here was 32 degrees. Divided by M. And uh, we just said that M here is 1. And this should give us our lambda. That is 5.89 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. And then we can convert that into nanometers here. That's 589 nanometers. It's usually a good idea to express those in terms of nanometers, that sort of thing. Okay, and that's our problem. So, again, these problems are very similar to the double slit experiment. They're also similar, like, 
once you get to this level of light, they start looking very similar, the, the results and the equations. So there's a few problems at the end there. Enjoy them.